What is going on, everybody? Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing. You know, spring is in the air. The sun is out. All the little fishies are moving around. The birds are singing. Sun is out. Time for it to break out. Time to break out the new shades. You know, that spring lineup is getting ready to come out from Saltwater Soul. It is an awesome, awesome, fun time to be fishing and being on the water. I love the springtime. You know, the the uh, everything's changing. Everything's starting to move in transition and getting out of that cold weather or that cold weather pattern. And the, war the waters are warming up. All oh, the little fresh hatch are coming out. The fish are moving. Starting to, some fish are starting to migrate and move, and everything's shifting. So in this Texas all water fishing, we're going to be talking about the springtime bite. Now I've done a series of videos where I'm discussing and talking about different fish migrating, different areas of fish, and different areas of target. But today I want to just talk about everything, kind of as a, a sum. A lump sum and kind of talk about what I'm seeing out there even like right now early spring well technically is not even spring yet we're a couple of weeks a couple of weeks away from it to it from being officially spring but uh, we're close enough it's warm enough it's in the 80s outside the water temps in the 70s 80s so we're, 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 we're there already we're, we're, we're there uh, so I just wanted to discuss some of that with you guys and in case if you're new to fishing or maybe introduce some new areas where you can fish and stuff that you can target so we're going to talk about what is going on what's going on with the bite talking about location and fish activity as well as baits and yeah what species to target and where before we go any further i just want to encourage everybody to subscribe to texas all water fishing like the video leave a comment below uh, in case i miss something there's a lot a lot to cover there's no way we can cover everything about spring fishing in one video so in case i leave something out that's maybe important to you or in case you do have a question then leave it in a comment below also share the video all that stuff really really helps out a lot and every week i sit down and i record a fishing report i record fishing forecasts for my patreon just kind of help the learning curve so some of the information that i shared with them this week i'm going to be sharing with you guys just so you can you just get like a little bite sample of some of the stuff that we talk about in our patreon page and there's a link in the description for that in case you do want to become a patron further help the channel or in case if you are new to fishing then help your learning curve as well we're going to primarily talk about inshore fishing the spring bite so one of the inshore fishing or the closest you can get to inshore from offshore is the jetties now during this time of the year the jetties are teeming with life i mean you, you get these nice flat days during the springtime. You get some nice clean water, and the jetties are just going off. They're on fire. You catch anything from black drums, the big uglies, the huge drums, to the big red drums from speckled trout. And one of my new favorite fish, kind of like the last couple of years, I really targeted sheephead a lot. Sheephead are migrating through the jetties, and in case you're not familiar with fishing for sheephead, I've done a several videos, I've done several videos showing you how to clean sheephead, and what baits to use, and what techniques I use to make sure that I do capitalize them on them, but they're feeding very, very aggressively. Anytime a fish starts to migrate or begins to migrate, they feed a lot because it takes a lot of energy so right now catching great numbers of sheephead big sheephead very aggressive bite just fun tastes great i mean sheephead on the half shell oh my gosh you know and, and if you're familiar with the show you know i don't eat fish a lot i'm not a big fish guy but sheephead sheephead really changed me and opened the door of the possibility of having fish as table fare instead of catching and releasing the fish i will keep some every once in a while and eat some fish tacos sheephead mwah, they taste great i know people say they're hard to clean but that's not the case at all but the jetties both north and south in galveston they do provide a lot of fish out there as well as the surfside freeport jetties you know they provide a lot of fish too i mean you can target black drums and red drums like i said using cut bait cut mullet shad crab get some big rods 
some nice weights, some big hooks, and send those guys out there. You can really target those. You can even use fish bites. You can use fish bites. Uh, fish bites work great with black drum too. Shh, kind of keep it a secret. Not everybody knows that, but you do want to go out there and target some big, heavy pullers. Now, that's just really strictly for catch and release because you do have restrictions. You can't keep the big uglies. And then, of course, you know, you can only keep tag one over slot redfish a year. So those are the big baby makers. So you really don't want to keep, you know, and then, and then the, the black drums, they, they hold a lot of worms too when they start getting in those big over 30 size, uh, around 30, they still start holding a lot of worms. So just a fun fish to catch. So the jetties provide sheephead, black drums, redfish, speckled trout, use a popping cork, use a Carolina rig, free line. You know, there's all different ways that you can fish out there and target a lot of these key species. And then you do have some fish that move in the area, such as Pompano, uh, Spanish mackerel, and jacks. You can get really lucky, especially if you're out there on the rocks in the jetties and those the those fish that tend to be a little more far off start coming in and start swinging in you can really really have a good time out there and trying to catch some of those guys as well now when it comes to fishing more inshore and away from the jetties inshore consists of open bays bayous any kind of mouse of the intersection intersecting waters where you may have a channel that opens up to the bay or you may have the bay that opens up to some of the bigger channels that go out through the jetties uh, any oyster reefs any drop-offs grass beds all of those areas really provide a a safe haven for a lot of bait that move in and out the area and that's where you're going to find the predator fish you're going to find the predator fish that is going to be feeding on the bait fish so rule of thumb always if you don't see bait odds are you're probably aren't going to see the fish as well but getting out there in those open bays and doing some nice trips whether you're in your kayak or your boat or fishing the grass the shoreline if you're wade fishing i mean these are areas that you really targeted a lot of fish and right now what is very abundant is speckled trout speckled trout are going to start the migrating process so right now they're going to be feeding very aggressive and as you go from Early spring to late spring, you can go in more in the summer, is when you start seeing more of those redfish. And you're going to start seeing some spring-like, you know, and during the spring-like weather, you also see some of those flounders start coming back and moving into what they call a spring run. Now, it's nothing like the flounder run when it first in, uh, kicks off during the fall and in the winter, but you will start seeing those flounders start to come back in. So, great baits to use. Anytime you use live shrimp, it's always great. Use it on a popping cork or a Carolina rig. You know, you can really target the specs on the cork or in case you want to go a little lower and see if you can pick some trout off on the bottom or maybe like a red or a flounder it's a great time to use a carolina rig and like i said you know free line of shrimp if the water is calm the conditions are calm and you're not having to tune too much current then it's always great to free line some shrimp as well as far as lure goes a lot of that's based on the water clarity as far as what colors you want to use but any kind of swim baits uh shrimp shrimp style uh artificial lures such as voodoo uh, inger baits Voodoo shad always great to target. You know, a lot of these, a lot of these baits are designed to move on their own. So a lot of straight retrieve, it's a lot of casting and just straight retrieving, or simply letting it fall. There's nothing wrong with using the corkies. So more slow falling baits. But just keep in mind when you do have fish that are feeding very aggressive, like some of the trout right now, as they start to get ready to spawn and get ready to move, they're going to start feeling, feeding very aggressive. That's when you can start fishing a lot more aggressive. Do a lot more bigger jerks and a lot more faster movement. You can throw, start throwing some more rattle traps. You know, the, the we are having, we had a a hatch of shad recently so in the last several weeks those shads are getting a little bigger and a little bigger and it's evident because some of the some of the trout that we're pulling out now may have some really really big shad so when you are starting to see you know match the hatch if you have smaller bait in the water then switch to a smaller profile lure it's good to downsize especially when you are fishing in very clean water conditions, yeah, you might want to down, downsize your leader line, your jig heads, and possibly even your your lure. Like I said, you have the fresh hatch of chad, shad, and you start getting the fresh hats of a, a fresh fresh hatch of a lot of the small shrimp and the grass shrimp. So that's when it's great to go with more of those small two inch voodoo shad bugs lures, something something like that in those um, in those areas where you are trying to mimic 
our match the hatch so what's going on and what's the fish are feeding on and let's not forget about night fishing now night fishing has been heating up over the last maybe month and a half and it's it's really heating up so whether you're fishing green lights or fishing with over headlights any areas that you have houses on the water any neighborhoods on the water is always great to target whether you're fishing for a boat or a kayak you know, again, downsizing is important, going with smaller, lighter leader line, because in the lights, in those green lights, in those overhead lights, uh, the fish, especially trout, have great eyesight, and sometimes they can see those leader lines. So if you're not getting the reactions that you want, then then switch it up. You know, you, I don't know. I mean, you may want to go to 10-pound, maybe 15-pound fluorocarbon leader line. Yeah, you may want to go and downsize a lot. You know, the spoons, silver spoons, really work great in the lights, also really works great on the in in the inshore when you are drift fishing because it does offer that profile where it looks like bait fish and does look like shad and don't forget about you know the bank fishermen those that are on the bank and then fishing on the rocks texas city dyke offers it's great right now drums are running the reds are running having a lot people are having a lot of success at places like texas city dyke seawell park off the fishing piers um and or even off the surf, you know, getting out there, getting your surf rods out, fishing the north and south jetty off the rocks, heading down to Freeport, fishing off the jetties in Freeport. I mean, in the surfside area, you know, this is just a ton of great fun. You know, as the waters warm up and as the 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 surf becomes more flat, it's great to get out there and start wade fishing here. I mean, it's the water temps probably like in the 70s, so it's a little cool, but it's still doable. But it's, like I said, it is a tremendous amount of fun. Spanish mackerel are showing up. Pompano are showing up. Uh, there was a lean caught the other day off 91st Street Pier. I mean, the, the waters have been flat and clean. Uh, recently, we're getting, ready to get, we're getting ready to get a front. So we're going to get a lot, a lot of wind. So that's going to stir things up again. So typically when you do have those northern winds, uh, they will flatten out the surf a little bit. But you just got to watch out for rip currents and tide. And I think that we're going to experience that over the next several days. We're going to start seeing a lot of those rip currents and tide. So Swell Info is a great tool to use to kind of keep your eye on the surf. You have some sites such as Saltwater Recon that offers cameras. The piers out there, they also, also offer cameras ahead as well as Galveston.com. So if you want to know what the surf is doing and how it's looking to make sure that you're out there at the right time, then utilize those tools. I've also done other videos on how do you per, how to predict or the best way that I've come that I can try to predict and what, what the surf is doing when the best time is to fish the surf and as we get closer and closer to the summertime you're going to start seeing me and the channel transition a little more into targeting those fish those big surf trout Spanish mackerel pompano uh, maybe even jacks this year you'll start seeing me transition more into that as I start to chase the bite out there when the opportunity prevails itself don't forget about the marsh the marsh is heating up big schools of reds are are moving and coming around more and more so they start seeing people pull them out with very good numbers so you got to pay attention to the water conditions as far as water clarity and kind of again matching the hatch smaller profile fishing those grass lines fishing those oyster reefs any kind of drop off intersecting waters all that stuff all those areas in the marsh help tremendously i hope this helps you in the description section of this video i'm going to leave links to other videos where i've talked about the fishing during this time of the year uh whether i'm fishing the jetties fishing for sheephead fishing in the marsh or even possibly going out and hitting the surf i'll leave all that information in the description section so you can watch more videos and help with your learning curve or if simply you just want to entertain yourself a little bit and kind of see what i had going on this time last year hey i appreciate each and every one of you don't forget subscribe if you haven't subscribed like if you haven't liked share if you haven't shared and definitely leave a comment i appreciate each and every one of you like i always always say because without you this wouldn't be possible thanks again hopefully next time you catch me hook it up thanks